Um, number five, um, I'm, I got from uh, an author named Gloria Felt, who's written a book about um, sort of the stagnation of the women's movement and the feminist movement. And she uses this term called sister courage. And as I unpacked it, what I really found that meant is that you don't go anywhere alone. You take your sisters with you, especially if you're feeling weak. And I was having dinner at our table, and I saw, and uh, apparently, you know the video thing? I hope you all signed up to be on the video. <laughs> I hope you didn't say no. Um, but I did hear there was a group of three that went to do theirs together, and I strongly support that. That's sister courage in action. Um, be a mentor. It doesn't have to be an official mentor through this program. Find women to mentor. You have benefited greatly from these programs. It's time to pay it forward. Uh, reach out to other women. Um, and I don't mean just other farming women. I mean chefs. I mean lawyers. I mean doctors. I mean women who are in professions. I mean tradeswomen. Because the more we create these networks, the stronger we are. And remember, women make 85% of the purchase decisions for every consumer dollar that is spent in this country. So go out there and get yourself some girlfriends. That was to the women in the group, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and network. I mean, you're all women were born to network. I mean, this is how we this is how we survive. Build those networks. Don't rely just on your own geographics, uh, but spread your network. Get a national network going. Find women in another part of the country to talk to. You learn so much about um, how to how to how to deal with different kinds of issues. How to deal with things on the farm. You'll deal with uh, you know. And fundamentally, a lot of the problems that farms face are very similar. So it won't be it won't be that different. Even though the crops are different and the animals may change. The problems are human problems almost all the time. Um, so number six, I, I teach marketing and business planning, so I had to fit this one in here somewhere because it's sort of my cornerstone. You've got to tell your story, and you have to tell it all the time, every day. Um, I just read a terrible statistic that uh, women write one ninth of the op-ed pieces that appear in newspapers around the country. One night. So that means we have a lot of work to do. We need to get out there. We need to pick up our pens and get our keyboards in hand and start writing for those local papers. Write opinion pieces. Write op-ed pieces. Um, nobody knows the food system more than you. You are in it. You're living it. People want to hear your story. Um, local radio and TV are great places. I mean, almost every state has opportunities for you. Um, you just have to grab your courage, take your sister with you, and go do it. Um, learn to use social media. I mean, that's where it's happening. I mean, the, you know, social exchanges are taking place there now, and you can you can get stories to go viral with very little effort. Um, document your success. Of course, you know, keep those. I mean, brag about it. When you make profit, you tell people about it. I mean, and tell them loud and proud, because there's a lot of dairy farmers, and I can tell you from personal experience, that cannot put a profit amount in the, in the ledger. Um, and the last one, um, it might be a little controversial for some of you who don't like the government, but um, it's going to be a census of ag year, and I really would appreciate it if you would pony up and fill out your census of ag. And the reason is, is I know it's in, I know that it's long, I know it's tedious, I know it takes a lot of time, but funding for programs like this is based on the evidence that the Census of Ag tells us is happening. So the reason programs like this exist is because the last census showed such a tremendous increase in the number of women farmers. Um, and I'm not, you know, I'm not talking about my own programs. I'm talking about all programs across the country. So. Please try to find room in your uh, lives to fill out that census. It's coming up this year. And it'll be an important one. Um, number seven. Now I bet you're wondering why is she sneaking this in here when we were talking about encouraging other people to get into farming. Well, the young folks especially and the young professionals that are thinking about career changes are smart, they're savvy, they have a lot of choices. If we can't show them that agriculture can be a profitable industry and a profitable livelihood, then why would they want to get into it? 
why would they want to work that hard? Um, so I want you to improve your relationship with money. And I know a lot of you would really rather have a root canal than pick up your financial forms, but I'd like you to do that. I'd like you to become financially literate. I would really, and again, this is particularly to the women in the room, protect your personal financial security. An amazingly embarrassing high percentage of women, elderly women, end their lives in poverty. So take care of yourself. Do what you need to do to make sure that you have enough money to last you for as long as you will be here. And then, if you have any left over, I want you to consider learning to be a philanthropist. Women, again, because we've never had a lot of money, have not learned how to give money away. So find those programs that resonate with you. Find those programs that mean something to you and help support them. It doesn't have to be with, um, it doesn't have to be a $100,000 check. It could be a $25 check. It could be a $10 check. It could be time. It could be services. Um, there's a lot of things you can do. But I'm absolutely convinced that um, the days of huge federal investments are pretty much over. So I think we're all going to have to be thinking about what kinds of programs do we want to um, support in our communities, in our states, um, and how are we going to actually support them and, and learn to be philanthropic. So, uh, number eight. This won't be hard. I, I have in almost 20 years of working with women farmers, this is not an issue. Let your passion show. Um, happiness is infectious. If people see you having a good time, they're going to want to be doing what you're doing. Um, and you have great jobs. You love your jobs. You know you do. Um, even on the bad days. Um, so let that passion shine. Um, share it with others. Um, get yourselves into the schools. Um, even if you don't have children, school-aged children, get yourselves into um, a position where you can um, learn, uh, get, where you can communicate with teachers and guidance counselors. Because a lot of teachers and guidance counselors do not consider agriculture a uh, feasible career choice for young people. So we have to get in there and we have to start turning that around. And the farm to school programs are doing a lot of that now getting food into the local school cafeterias, having gardening programs, but we need to do more. We need to get it into the career counseling side of things so that people understand you can grow up to be a farmer and that could be a really good professional choice. Uh, so number nine is plan for the future. Um, I talked earlier about we only have in the Northeast, we have 6% of the country's land mass, so we don't have a lot of extra land kicking around that we can we can be careless with. We've got to be very intentional about our land. Who's going to farm your land when you're not farming it anymore? Um, today would be a good day for you to start your farm transition plan. Um, the day that you write your business plan, the day that you sign your mortgage papers, that's the day you start planning your transition. Uh, because I promise you it doesn't get any easier if you let 15 or 20 years go by. Um, so start planning how that land is going to be used and let's make sure that we don't let um, an excess acre go by uh, without really thinking carefully about and strategically about whether that was the best choice for that land. So here's the last one and here's your homework assignment. Um, the last one is up to you. Um, there could, there's lots of strategies and actions we can take that will help draw in people and, and re, you know, just light a fire under agriculture and, and encourage people to explore farming as a career. There's lots of it. And I hope you will, on your way back to your rooms or on your way out or wherever it is that uh, your evening is going to take you, I hope you chat with people that you've met today and come up with some other strategies and other actions that you can take and you can commit to. Because this is all about what are you going to commit to doing. And truthfully, I know that some of you are probably already doing half of these or more. Um, maybe some of you are doing one or two. If we all pick just one or two more out of the list that we could do and we could do with integrity and intention, then I think we can really make a difference. I think we can attract those young people that we need to be our next generation of farmers.